Hello, I'm Matt from Practical BI and welcome to another Power BI guide. This time we're looking at date tables. This guide is aimed at the intermediate level, so it would be helpful if you have some existing knowledge of the way that data models and relationships work in Power BI and also have an appreciation for different data types, in, in particular um, uh, what a date data type represents. So before we dive into a practical example, uh, let's just look first of all at what a date table is and, and why we might need one. So first of all, what is a date table? Well, a date table is simply a, an additional table of data that has a date column as the key column uh, with additional uh, columns appended that might give us additional information about that particular date. So we could have a, a month field, a month year field. We could have um, a field that indicates whether a, a particular date is a holiday or not. Um, we can append any information that we want to this date table. And then we can join it to multiple um, uh, transactional data tables um, using uh, the date column again as that as that key. Um, so that's great, but but why would we want to use a date table at all? Why can't we just use the dates that are in uh, the, the, the data already? Well, the first benefit of using a date table is that it allows us to use different date formats. So uh, for example, uh, we've got month, year here. Um, uh, we don't have that format available to us in Power BI, so should we want to use that shortened version of the month and shortened version of the year, um, we can specify that in our date table um, and use it uh, in our report. The second reason is that it allows us to measure across different date fields in a single chart, and we'll look at this in a practical example um, shortly. But what that means is we can, we can for example, uh, use purchase date and sale date um, within the same chart so we can we can measure our purchase amount and our sale amount um, on the same chart there. Thirdly, using a date table allows us to create alternative date hierarchies um, that aren't available natively in Power BI. So for example we might want to drill down into uh, from, from a year into uh, to a week level and then from a week level down to a weekday um, and we can't currently do that in, in in Power BI without a date table. Uh, and the final uh, benefit of using a date table is it enables the uh, uh, and supports the time intelligence functions that are available in Power, in Power BI. Um, so uh, time intelligence functions cover a, a broad range of, of functions, of DAX functions within Power BI that I'll go into in more detail on another tutorial. Uh, but you may be familiar with some of the functions like previous month, um, like dates, month to date, um, other, other functions like that that are uh, time intelligent. Okay, so let's dive into our report and have a look at a practical example. Okay, so I'm in a dashboard here. I've got some fairly simple data. Let's just have a look at what we've got already in this dashboard. So I've got two tables. I've got a purchases table and a sales table. Um, each of those tables has a date field. I've got purchase date over here and I've got sale date and then I've got a units purchased and a units sold um, column uh, in each table, one in each table. Um, I've just put a couple of summary tables on the dashboard here just to give you a view of, of what's in these tables. So we've got um, uh, our sales table, we've got a sale date and then a unit sold. We've got a purchase table with a purchase date and units sold. So the first thing to notice is that we've got uh, what look like monthly sales for our uh, sales table, uh, whereas we've got daily sales across our purchases table. And I've just put a graph in here, a simple bar chart um, that gives us our units sold by sale date. Um, and so at the moment you can see that that's, that's just a, a monthly view. So let's say that the task assigned to us or the requirement that's come from the customer is to be able to show the units sold and units purchased each month on the same chart. Well, let's have a go at doing that straight away without a date table. So at the moment I have sale date on my axis, on my x-axis, and I have units sold. So let's try dragging in units purchased into the values uh, section here and see what happens. So you can see that actually there's no aggregation, uh, there's no relationship detected between the uh, units purchased and the sale date. Um, I have none defined in my data model. As you can see, um, Power BI just assumes uh, the total here 
uh, applies to every month because it can't detect that relationship. So I've got 870,000 uh, uh, showing in each month here, which is my, my total number of units. So that's no good. That's not going to give me uh, what I need. Um, but maybe if I, if I drag in the purchase date, let's see what happens there. First of all, I get the date hierarchy. Let's just split that down to date. Um, and what you can see is I've actually just got a drill down here. Um, so I could uh, drill down into my purchase date. Um, as you can see, then I get the, the absolute opposite effect uh, where my units sold um, are showing as, as the, the total each on each individual day where I've got sales across my um, purchase table. So that's no good either. So let's try and remove a purchase date and uh, go back to our original chart. Okay, so the, the, the first benefit here of, of a date table is it's going to allow us to, to view these uh, two measures on, on the same chart. So let's have a look at how we create one. So I'm going to go to my modeling tab at the top and I'm going to click new table. I'm going to call this table uh, calendar. And I'm just going to use the calendar DAX uh, function here, calendar, and it says input a start date and an end date. So what this function is going to do is it's going to create a, a table with a single column in of dates for me. I just have to specify the start date there and the end date. And I could specify um, a date in this format um, for, my, for my start and end date, or I could make, it, uh, make my calendar dynamic um, and I could use the minimum of my sales date, say, um, and the maximum of my sales of, of my sales date, if I know um, that my minimum and maximum uh, do extend across across all the entire date range that I want to look at. In this instance, though, when I look at sale date, actually the last sale date is the first of December. Now, if I look at the last purchase date. Um, that table if I look at the last purchase date here what you'll see is it's actually the 31st of December so in the definition of my calendar table here I need to make sure that I'm taking the max of the purchase of the purchase date and not the sales date okay so uh, you may have seen uh, when, I, when I first um, validated that calendar table we've got a new table that's appeared up here our calendar table and we've got a single column in that table let's just have a look in the uh, data view and see what that table looks like click on my calendar table as you can uh, and you can see here I've got a table that's just a, a column of all the dates available um, and uh, that extends from the minimum sale date to the maximum purchase date okay so uh, the, the first thing we can do is, is we can set see how, how well that works with our data um, without doing anything else. Let's see what happens. So I'm going to drag that uh, date field in instead. Again, I'm going to remove the uh, hierarchy, just show the date. But as you can see, this is uh, yet again showing exactly the same. We've got the total coming across um, in every month. And the reason for that is because we don't have any relationships defined between our date table and our um, uh, sales and, and purchases table. So let's go over to our model view. Um, let's bring our calendar table over here. Um, and I'm just going to create a relationship between sale date and date. I'm going to create another one between purchase date and date. And I'm going to go back to my report view. And now you can see that my unit sold is showing uh, exactly as it was before, but I'm using my date field here for my calendar table. Um, so let's also try and bring in purchase uh, units purchased here as well. Drag that into my values. And as you can see, um, although this chart still doesn't look right, we've now got um, uh, different values across each, each individual month. I can hover over and validate these against my table. On the 18th of January, we had 3,374 sales. If I go um, to the 18th of January in my table, I can see 3,374. So this is working correctly, but it still doesn't look right. We want units sold and units purchased by month. Um, so let's go back into our table, our data view here, and have a look at our, our date table. Now, there are a couple of things to do at this stage. Um, first of all, I'm going to mark my, my calendar table uh, as a date table. So with the table selected on the right-hand side here, 
I'm going to go up to the top under table tools and I'm going to click on markers date table and markers date table here. Now the reason for marking a table as a date table is that it allows me to um, it allows Power BI to identify this table as a date table, um, which will enable, um, amongst other things, uh, use of the time intelligence functions um, within Power BI with this date table. So let's drop down here and I'll select my date column as date. Um, Power BI validates that column, um, and I can just click OK to that. And the next stage is I'm going to add a new column to this table. And I'm going to call this column month year. Um, and uh, to give me the, the, the value in this com column, I'm, I'm going to um, use the format function. I'm going to format my date field. I'm going to format it um, uh, month, 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 year, year. So. Uh, you'll see how this looks. This is a, an abbreviated version of the month and the uh, last two digits of the year. So we've got September 19 and um, uh, the 1st of September 2019. Um, you can see how they correlate uh, as we go down the, the, the date table there. OK, so let's go back into our chart um, and let's drag in our month year field into our axis here instead of our date column. I'm going to remove the date column. And as you can see, um, this looks like a much more sensible chart. I'm just going to change the uh, color of my uh, units uh, purchased and units sold so that they correlate with my tables on the right hand side. Um, but there's something you might have noticed that's still not quite right here. We've actually got um, a seemingly random order of, of our months along the x-axis here. Um, and obviously we, we would want to order these by time. Um, so uh, I'll go back into my um, data view. I'm going to add an additional column here. So I'll go to new column. And I'm going to call this my month year key. Um, and let's just, uh, uh, so there are lots of ways of, of de deriving a value here. I'm just going to take my year. Um, of, of my date, and I'm going to times it by 100, and I'm going to add to that my month of my date, uh, date column. And what you'll see is that gives me a numeric value that I can use to sort my month year column. So the reason that Power BI uh, can't identify any order to these dates without me specifying this manually is because as far as uh, Power BI is concerned, this month year column is simply a text column and it's treating it as such. Um, the uh, month year key is what's going to enable me to sort that month year column. Now you might say, why, why bother going to all this trouble? Um, but the, the, the month year abbreviation is, is a, um, a very short and, and simple and tidy abbreviation for month year. And um, what you'll notice is I've actually, I'm actually able with this abbreviation to, to see the month year against every single column in my chart, where previously you might notice, have noticed that it was, um, that I only had some of the months showing um, uh, where, where there was room. Um, so let's go to our, uh, our month year column. I'm going to select that column. And up under column tools, there's a sort by column button here. I'm going to drop down on sort by column. I'm going to select month year key. Wait for Power BI to evaluate that. And then uh, nothing changed yet. But if I drop down on my more options here, I'm going to go to sort by. I'm going to go to sort by month year. And what you'll see is uh, this is in um, descending order at the moment. So let's go into ascending order. And I've got my sales month on month, January through to December, um, my sales and purchases on the same chart. So that's done um, everything that we need it to. OK, so the next thing that I'm going to look at is the benefit of being able to filter all of the data in my report using this date field uh, without having to filter each uh, date field individually. So let's just drag on my, my, my date field onto the canvas. Uh, I'm going to convert that to a slicer. Um, let's just change the format of that so it's slightly easier to see. Okay, and you'll notice at, at the moment I've got um, 
the 1st of September to the 31st of December, um, 1st of September 2019 that is. Um, I've actually already got a filter on my page here um, that's uh, that represents sale date um, and I've restricted that to, to 2020. Um, so let's just uh, um, Okay, so the next thing I want to demonstrate is how uh, using a, a, the new date field that we've created, um, we can filter the data in our in our report in a simple way um, without having to uh, filter each individual date column. So let's just bring in that date field onto the canvas. I'm going to convert that to a slicer, and let's just change the um, appearance of that so it shows up a bit, uh, a bit better. Um, and now you can see I've got the, the the full date range in my date table. And let's see what happens if I um, reduce that date range, say, just to um, a few months. You can see that uh, across both my tables, um, that data is filtered. Um, the alternative, obviously, would have been uh, I, I would have to have brought in purchase date and filter purchase date and brought in sales date and brought in sales date there as well. So it makes it much easier, much simpler to filter my data in my dashboard as well. And that is date tables. Um, I hope you've found this video useful. If you have, please uh, comment, um, or like and subscribe. And that is date tables. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Um, if you have, please like and subscribe. Um, and as always, I welcome your, your comments, concerns, any feedback you have. Um, please do put them in the comments underneath this video. I'll, um, I'll include the data sets that I've used in this guide. Um, in links in the comments in the and that's date tables i hope you've found this video useful if you have please like and subscribe as always if you have any uh, thoughts comments concerns um, please do put them in, in the comments underneath this video as always i'll um i'll try to include the the, the data that i've used here um, and that's date tables um, i hope you've found this video useful if you have please uh, like and subscribe um, if you if you haven't or if you have any other feedback or ideas or thoughts comments concerns please add them to the comments underneath the, the video I'll make sure that the data sets used here are available um, and I'll put a link to them in the description of this video if you'd like to, to follow along with the same example um, and I'll also uh, put a link to this um, this uh, Power BI document in the uh, in, in the description as well um, so thanks and look forward to speaking to you again